Okay, in this video, I am going to show you all how to create a digital model that can be 3D printed into a texture roller that can be used on clay to create some really uh, cool and interesting textures. And so we're going to be using Tinkercad here. Um, I did another video that has a that is a little bit more of a broader overview of all the different tools in Tinkercad or all the, you know, the, some of the basic tools. And so, um, so I'm not going to get into all of that in this particular video, but just know that this is Tinkercad and this is, um, you know, Tinkercad is a free uh, web-based software. You don't have, have to download anything. Um, all you have to do is make an account and, um, and then once you get an account, then you'll have a dashboard that will save all of your files and everything. And so you can find that at Tinkercad.com. And so um, when you open up a new file in Tinkercad, you're going to have a work plane that's like this. And um, so uh, I find myself using usually the basic shapes over here. There's lots of other different options, but um, we're going to just kind of scroll down and um, we will, uh, why don't we select the heart and let's bring the heart in here. And um, let's say, you know, so now we have the, uh, you know, relatively boring looking heart here. And uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of rotate that. So if we grab those arrows there, then you can rotate that. And, um, you know, maybe we'll bring it back. Let's bring it back to about there. Um, and then uh, let's see, let's rotate this around a little bit so we can see the other side of it. Let's make this a little longer. And um, let's see. Uh, why don't we make this a little bit thinner by grabbing this one and we'll just kind of thin that out a little bit like that. Okay, so now we have a um, kind of a heart shaped on its end. It's, it's a little bit below the plane, which isn't really a big deal, but let's just kind of move that up. Um, and then, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the duplicate tool. And duplicate the, um, you know, it basically it duplicates the shape. So on a Mac, you can hit Command-D, or on a PC, you can you know, use Control-D. So what you do is you select the, the um, part here that you want to want to duplicate, and then um, I'll duplicate that. And what it does is it just duplicates it exactly where it is right now, so it doesn't look like you've done anything. But what you can do is you when you, if you go to this arrow, you rotate that, and you'll see that you're creating a new shape here. And so, um, you know, this will allow you to change the angle here. What you can also do is just um, type in um, the angle that you'd like to rotate it, okay? So now I have a 45 degree rotation here. And the nice thing is, is that with the duplicate tool, you can then, um, the, the computer will remember that you've done that with the shape, and then you could just keep doing it again and rotate that all the way around until you get, you know, a shape that is much more complex and interesting and, um, you know, it takes a relatively boring shape and kind of uh, magnifies it into a much more interesting shape, okay? So now uh, what this shape is is actually a collection of, you know, whatever this is, eight, eight or nine different hearts here. Um, but what I want to do is I want to now take this shape and I'm going to select this all like that. So now I have uh, uh, selected every one of these little hearts right here. And I'm going to group these together so that they are one shape. And so I'm going to go up here to group and I'm going to click on that. And that will make the whole thing into one shape. Okay. So now I have one single shape. Um, and then now that I have done this with basically one row of these hearts, now I can then select this, okay, and I can do the same uh, duplication that I did with the single heart, but I can do it with this whole part, okay. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna hit um, your either Command D or Control D, and then what I what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up here. And uh, let's see, okay, so now that's too obviously too high. I want to bring it up so that I'm kind of sort of sandwiching it into the top half of it here. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll kind of rotate this again a little bit just to kind of shift these angles and the planes and things like that, okay? So now I have 
uh, duplicated, I've raised and rotated. And so if we zoom out, I can then stack these on there again. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now I have, um, you know, a, a, a shape that is actually probably would be pretty interesting for a texture roller. Okay, so let me let me put a, just one more on the top there, and then I can show you how to basically crop the top of that off if it's it's way too tall right now. But um, okay, so now that I have all these different shapes, I'm gonna select these all again, and I want to group again so that this is one single shape. Okay, so now I've done that, and now that they're one shape, now I can get a measurement here. So I can when I roll over the center line here, this shows me that you know, this is 117 um, millimeters. And so um, what, I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that, I, I, what I, I want the texture roller to be 60. Um, I've been making all the texture rollers 60 high and 40 uh, wide and 40 deep. And so, and that makes it so that I can use the same tool, uh, the same dowel tool to roll the texture, the, to use with the texture roller. So if they're all different sizes, I have to make a different dowel rod for each one, so that's kind of a pain. So what I'm going to do is I could, if I wanted to, I could just select that and I could highlight that and just hit 60. And, um, you know, that could make a pretty cool roller, actually. Um, but it's definitely compressed all the different angles and the different parts, okay? So I'm going to um, jump back and show you how, if you wanted to crop it or cut the top of it off, um, you know, you could do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring, I'm going to go get a cylinder. I'm going to bring this cylinder over. And, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of make this a little bit extra big here. So I'm going to just say uh, 60 and 60. Okay, and so now I have this solid cylinder. Um, but what I want it to be is a negative shape. So I'm going to, with this selected, I'm going to go up to hole and I click on hole. And so now this is a negative shape, which means it'll cut anything off of the, of the, um, of the positive shape that I have. So I'm going to bring this up here and I'm going to bring this over the top here. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's centered necessarily, but it just, you know, you just want to have it all the way around. Now I'm actually going to bring this up a little bit so that I can uh, bring this down. Now if you look, here let me zoom in a little bit more on this. Um, if I bring it down too much, I'm going to be able to see the top. So it's just going to cut a space out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make sure that I have, you know, covered the shape and then in, you know, the, um, the negative shape all the way. So. Um, Okay, so now that I have this, what I'm going to do is I will then select the whole thing again. And in order for the whole shape to cut out, you need to select it and then group it. Okay, when you group it, it's going to chop off the top here. Okay, so now I've chopped off the top of that, of the shape here. Okay, so now let's take another reading. Okay, it's 87, you know, that's closer. But what I'm going to also do is I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom because I have the bottom is kind of rounded here. And so um, you could e you could do that by either flipping the object. So you could just say, I'm going to just grab this and just flip this around like that to 180. Um, and it's a little bit low, but I'm going to just, I can take this arrow and I could just move this up a little bit like that. And um, so now it's sitting on the plane. And then I think what I'll do is I'll just kind of chop the top of it off too. And so again, I'm going to just, I'll make this 55. Oops, I didn't select that correctly. So when you select these corners, it'll give you the option to either manually do it um, or, you know, click and drag, or you can actually type these numbers in. And um, okay, so remember, I, this is a positive. I need it to be a negative shape. So I'm going to click hole. I'm going to take the black arrow and I'm going to bring it up here and I'm going to bring this over the top and if you can kind of zoom in it'll give you a little bit of a preview of what it's going to cut here so this darker area okay so that's not going to cut very much but I'm going to just kind of chop like that okay and let, let's just see what that does there 
So I will just kind of take a quick little look and make sure I'm covering the whole thing. I'm going to select it, then I'm going to go to group, and when I hit group, it'll chop that top off. Okay. So now what I have is I have one that's 78. Now it might be kind of interesting to I could just now I could go through that process again and cut it down even more until you get closer, or I could just do that. And you know I think that might be actually a pretty interesting um, texture roller. Okay, so now I have this 60 inches, or it's not 60 inches, um, I have this 60 high, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the sides here. Now what I want is I want this to be 40, so it's a little bit over 40, not a big deal, but I think I'm going to just make those 40, and, um, and that way it's consistent with the other rollers that I've been making. Okay, so now I have this shape. Um, kind of interesting, lots of cool texture happening in there. Um, and, um, but it doesn't have a hole in it yet. So I need to make a hole in the top here so that there's a, I can put a, um, a printed, a 3D printed dowel rod through. Okay, so in order to do the hole, I'm gonna bring this, another cylinder out here. And um, now I want this to be taller than the shape is. So I'm gonna say the shape is 60. I'm going to make this 70, okay? So what I did is I just clicked on that, this thing here, I typed in 70, and now it made a cylinder that was taller than my shape here, okay? I, um, what I've been doing with the texture rollers is making them all 20 on the width and the, and the depth. So this is already set at 20. Um, I have a printed, a 3D printed dowel rod that's 18, and so it just gives a little bit of space there um, okay, so now I have a, a positive. What I need to do is make that a negative. So with this selected again, I click on hole. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over, kind of eyeball it a little bit in the middle. Okay, so now obviously I'd, I want the 3D printed roller to act like a real roller and, and have it be centered here. So what I need to do is I'm going to select these parts here. And then I'm going to go up here to this tool right here, which is a line. And a line will make this so that I can align this right in the center and make sure that it's totally in the center. Okay. Now the other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure it's sticking through the bottom here. And so I'm going to take this and uh, I'm going to select the hole here and I'm just going to kind of plunge that down a little bit and make sure that it's sticking out the bottom. Okay. So now that it's sticking out the bottom, you can kind of see both ends are there. I'm going to select the whole thing again and I'm going to group again. So remember that group will take that hole and actually cut the shape out. Okay, so now I have this hole, okay, through the printed roller, okay. And so now I can just double check my measurements. I have 60 here and I have 40 wide and 40 deep and I have a 20 inch or a 20 uh, hole here. Okay, and so that will make it consistent with my other texture rollers and uh, will make it so it fits the dowel rod that I'm using. Okay, um, and um, this Tinkercad saves automatically, um, but what I usually do is I just go up here and I select this here and I'll put, I'll, I'll title it something that, you know, makes it easy for me to remember or to see it. When I see it in the 3D printer, I want to know what it is. And so um, let's say, uh, let's call it heart uh, duplicated. Okay, so that just w will be a reminder that I use the heart shape with this. And, um, and then uh, that's pretty much it for this. I'm gonna do another video about how to export and, and prepare the model for 3D printing. Um, but that's how you can make a, um, a 3D printed uh, or a uh, rather a digital model of a texture roller um, or for a texture roller out of a relatively simple shape and magnify and stack and um, you know create a, a really interesting shape that will make some cool textures and um, I'll make another video about how to actually uh, apply that to clay um, but for now just take these steps and experiment. The biggest thing is just to try a whole bunch. You know, um, you know, if you don't like it, just select it all and delete it and start over. And, and once you, the more times you do it, the faster it is to create these models. 
And uh, you'll be surprised at some of the simple shapes that can create really interesting um, texture rollers. So um, just jump into it and um, just, just practice. And, um, and that's it.